What is going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to week three of the NFL season. It's Bobby Fath, my man, Rody. We're going to be talking through our favorite picks and plays throughout the week, uh, or for Sunday, I should say. Um, it's, you know, it's funny because there's we haven't had like many 50 total games, and there's only one again this week. It's just we haven't really had those, those monster totals yet. Um, for those of you who haven't followed either, just for what it's worth, the first week of the NFL season, I believe it was thir uh, 13 out of the 16 games went under. And in week two, uh, 12 out of the 16 games went over. Uh, I think we're going to see more overs as, as we start to go, which uh, maybe we can find something in some of these other games that are not named, not, are not Minnesota and the Chargers, because that's very clearly going to be the chalk and where everyone's at. But, Rody, how you doing, man? Uh, any overall thoughts on the slate before we jump into to position by position? And we'll pull up your screen to do that whenever you're ready. But talk about, talk about what's going on, and uh, then we'll get into it. Yeah, I mean, everybody's been kind of on this, like, we've had some decent chalk the last few weeks not really getting there, or, you know, we've had some injuries, and we've had some chalk, and it's just a lot of messy stuff right now for the first couple of weeks of the season, so some games in the beginning of the first week were high total week we wanted, and then they didn't do anything, KC last week didn't do anything with that Jags game, a lot of people were on that, so there's just been a lot of weird stuff going on the first couple of weeks, um, it sucks. My Chargers are going to be the chalk game with the big total, but you know, Minnesota hasn't looked very good this year, so this could be a shootout and might be a game we want to have on our yeah. list. So, yeah, yeah, and it's just one of those things. Maybe, maybe we take pieces and use it as a secondary stack or something like that because I don't want to fade that game entirely either. Um, I just feel like there's too much opportunity. So, we'll talk. I mean, I'll mention the stacks that I like real quick. Um, Obviously, Minnesota and the Chargers, uh, Atlanta, Detroit, Indy, Baltimore, Houston, Jacksonville, Chicago, KC, and then the Buffalo side of the Buffalo, Washington game. But I know that's a lot, but that's that's that that's where I'm starting from uh, to start with. What what games are you looking at stacking or do you want to just jump into quarterbacks and we can talk about them as we go through quarterback? Um, Yeah, I like I really like the chart. Obviously, I play the Chargers all the time, but yeah, like sometimes when they get chalky, I actually get off them. But they have a pretty, you know, like we'll see if Eckler's back this week. You could just run it with him, you know, in that game. He scores all the touchdowns or something, but we'll see. He's projected in right now, but um, and then Justin Jefferson's a great run back to Eckler, so that's a good stack. You know, I've been on the Green Bay team a lot this week. They're, you know, that total is one of those lower total games, uh, but the cheap stack options, you know, and um, I also think Jacksonville has a bounce back week this week against Houston. You know, a lot of people are probably on this Tank Dell play for over there, but I like that. Um, yeah, the Buffalo game. Buffalo's Josh Allen had a good week last week. Washington's D's a little sneaky, though, so, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, Allen's pretty good, and, uh, yeah, those are the main games I'm on. Um, mm -hmm. Just a lot of weird, like, higher, like, uh, like teams I like on one side, but not like, you know, like KC versus the Bears. That's a terrible total looking. That's 17 for the Bears total and a 30 for the KC. It's just so lopsided. Yeah. Like the Dallas game. There's some really good offenses that are just playing very weak teams this week. So we really got to watch out on that, I think. So yeah, absolutely. I, I wanna, I'm going to try to find one of, more of these competitive games, I think, mm -hmm. and try to get those stacks, like the shootouts, like the you know Chargers, Minnesota. You know, even mm -hmm. Jacksonville is a little lopsided. But maybe even this Packers-Saints game is more total, even total, you know. So. Yep. No, that makes sense. Um, I mean, yeah, right now, like for quarterbacks, I, I like just, just, just with I, I am gonna take some shots on Justin Fields. Like it probably ends up at a ten percent, but like I know I, I'm gonna take shots one last time. Well, not one last time, but one more time until uh, whatever happens. Uh, I, I still believe that that the upside is there. Um, my main quarterbacks, though, right now are Lawrence and her and Cousins. Uh, I'm sorry, are Herbert and Cousins, uh, along with Lawrence and Josh Allen. Those are the main guys I'm using at the moment. The one I'm going to definitely add is Lamar, um, and uh, that's pretty much my my main quarterbacks. Even I'm considering a Jared Goff like triple stack, but I don't know that I'm gonna. It's gonna be that that significant for me. Who are you looking at for a quarterback? And tell me why I should be playing Jordan Love again. <laughs> yeah, sure. I know. I, I man, a lot, I've talked to a lot of people about the Packers because they, they talked to me about him and and they like him. They lo he looks good that game. I felt like they took the foot off the pedal. They had a you know a twelve point lead and they blew yeah. the game. They just stopped. Just three and outs. They just stopped doing what they were doing. We mm -hmm. could have had a couple quick scores. That game could have been a lot higher scoring than it was. 
um, with Atlanta coming back, but maybe the Packers got the touchdown for the win or uh, got ahead again. But these teams, the Chargers do the same thing, guys. If they get big up on Minnesota, they just take their foot off the gas, let the other team come back in. So that's why that Minnesota Vikings game I kind of really like. And Kirk Cousins is 6,900. You want to get on that side of the game. His ownership's still pretty high. I mean, these these aggregate projections are pretty high in ownership. Uh, Herbert's mm-hmm. is not that bad, though. Uh, he's 7,500, so he's a little bit more pricey than he's been. He's been around 7K, roughly. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So I like him. Keep him a little bit lower owned, I think, than, than, than on the other side with Cousins. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I... You know, I, I like that game. I know, I know you're on Lamar. I know and Mahomes is really priced up, and you just don't know who. I mean, you could do a Mahomes Kelsey, but you just DJ Moore stack. But I, I don't know. I like the Fields call that Bobby just had a little bit better. Fields can run. He's going to be running for his life there. You know, Jones back and stuff. So maybe he's going to have to do something. Um, mm. I like that play. I don't mind the Jordan Love play. I, I still like him. Um, I, I might, I might target some Geno here at 5700. I think he's. I, I didn't mention that game as a stack, I, and it's a little lopsided, but I do have Seattle this week as a team that I kind of like. Um, I think uh, Gino at 5700 here is a pretty good price. He's got some good stacking options um, as well, so I think his ownership's pretty good. I, I like that. And Trevor Lawrence at 68, he's gonna he broke some slates last year. This this cheaper price tag, so mm-hmm. look out look out for that. Houston's not that great of a team. Could be a shootout spot. I know a lot of these totals this week are lopsided. That's why it's it's going to be a tough week. You're gonna like some teams might just blow them all out. And there might not be a run back on some of these stacks. It might be one of those type of weeks to build build way, build that yeah, way. I don't mind that that idea, especially this week. I mean, and and even even some of the games that may be closer, like Miami Denver, for example. We really don't know if Miami's just going to beat the hell out of them. It wouldn't surprise me if Denver stayed yeah. close. You know, and 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 I feel that way about Jacksonville and Houston. I actually think that Houston has shown. Pretty good, re- like resolve so far this season. They they've been a little bit like tougher than people think. Maybe maybe they can keep it in there long enough to where that 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 game makes a better stack. Um, <clears throat> switching over to running backs, I'll go first real quick. Um, so this is going to depend. I mean, we obviously don't know if we don't know if Jamal Williams is playing yet. If he's out, I will take another shot on Tony Jones. Um, Tony Jones Jr. Uh, I think Ford Ford and Jones are both going to be pretty chalky. If that happens, uh, but that's your value to where it opens up everything for the Charger game, and that's probably going to be a pretty common build. So I'm looking for other guys in that price range that maybe let people down. If Eckler's out, I'll go right back to Josh Kelly ahead of those guys. Um, I love I love Pollard as a spend up. I like Madison in the mid range. Uh, AJ Dillon, I'm happy to go back to in the mid range. If Aaron, jo- well, or Aaron Jones, just depending on whichever one, whatever the final final injury report says. Uh, Brian Robinson is another pivot off of those guys that I like a little bit. Ramondre Stevenson, Raheem Mostert, and then Damian Pierce being the other pivot off of the potential Jones, Ford, and uh, possibly Kelly, you know, stuff. Uh, I am not going to be – there's other guys who are popular this week that I'm not on, really. Um, Miles Sanders, uh, I'm not going to play. Uh, I'm not going to play as much Kenneth Walker. I'll probably play a little bit, but not that much. I do like Zach Moss. I forgot to mention him. And uh, I think Pacheco also is another one of those pivots. And uh, if you're if you're into the, the Atlanta-Detroit game, B. John Robinson. So right now it's really going to depend on what the final injury reports come out as because we, we really don't know about the Tony, the, the Jones uh, situation in, in New Orleans. And we don't know for sure about the, the situation in the, for the Chargers or Green Bay for that matter. So it's really going to depend. Um, you're going to potentially have a lot of really cheap running backs that are going to be very chalky. And in that case, I might try and switch up my builds and go spend up at running back. What are you doing as of right now at running back? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of questionable uh, players here on this list of uh, yeah, look at um, running backs. We got, yeah, they go down a little farther. There's a few guys down there too. Um, yeah, if, if Williams don't play that, Tony Jones might be the uh, good run back to – um, the Green Bay stack just kind of overload that game. Jones and Alave, Mike Thomas type stack, you know, with the three guys from Green Bay or something. Um, you know, so we just got to look at some of these games. You know, you know, you know, Pollard's a really good run running back plays, getting a lot of ownership here. Um, most start against Denver too. You know, he's come on at only six K. He's really reasonable. Ford's quite chalky at forty eight hundred this week. But Tennessee's got that good rush defense, guys. So we might want to might be a week we jump off Ford. So 
they they held some good running running back so far at Tennessee has so not sure I want to go there. See, uh, you know Walker I had a little bit last week got the two touchdowns but he didn't have a lot of yards. Could be a big bounce back week for him for getting a big hundred yard rushing game against Carolina. But Chaber- Zach Chabernet got used a little bit too so watch that work percentage there in that one. Um, Gibbs now with no Montgomery um, against the. If Lakers. Montgomery's out, it's not official yet, right? Uh, I've got I've got Montgomery officially as questionable, but I could. But is it could still be. is he still questionable? I, th- I think that I think that there's. I thought on- some report. I, I didn't read the report today, but it said Dan Campbell said something like the news article was like Dan Campbell not good uh, not good results with uh, David Montgomery. So I, I don't know what the result. Yeah, was. I, I think it's unlikely that he plays. Yeah. So. We still got a lot of monitor at running back this week, guys. Very heavy. I like the I like the B. John Robinson call against Detroit. That might be another game that I could get to a little bit. You know, Land has been doing some good work. You know, got some young talent. Drake London had a bounce back. A lot of guys we talked about last week in the DFS pick show had yeah. bounce back weeks, guys. They really did. So if we could have just got some right lineups put together, man, we had a lot of the right pieces last week. I did have a decent day. I had some five five fives up there. Anthony Richardson was in a good one. He got hurt. That was kind of unfortunate. A yeah. lot of injuries lately. It's really, you know, you're you're on one side or the other side of them a lot, a lot in this these first couple of weeks. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna monitor the Eckler. I'm gonna monitor Aaron Jones. You know, Dylan was a chalk piece last. We kind of didn't get there. I still like the passing for Green Bay. Um, James Cook questionable against Washington, but their defense is so you know, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, we got Kendra Miller as uh, getting projected this week for the Saints too. That could get into Tony Jones a little bit. I was wondering when he was going to be back because he's been hurt the first couple weeks. Um, yeah, that whole the, the whole running back there is going to be very confusing. Whether Miller Jones, do they? And I'm assuming that that most likely Jamal Williams is not going to play. So. We're gonna to have to make a tough decision if we want to play those guys. They are super cheap, so yeah. uh, five and forty three hundred. I think we can consider that. We also have to find out. You know, this is this is we record these on Thursday nights, guys, and we don't know. Like it's it's impossible to to, to know you know a lot without speculating. But the, but we have we want to get something out to you guys early uh, before we go live on Sunday at eleven. But it, it's really tough because you're you're gonna you've got so many situations where we really don't know who the running back's going to. I mean, sorry, who's who's going to play and who's not. Um, and I think a lot of these questionables, like Jamal Williams, uh, like it, oh, we need to know about Kareem Hunt, how many, whether he's even going to play, oh, yeah. and yeah. how much of the workload we think they're they're going to give him. If he does play, it's obviously going to take away some of the love for uh, for Ford. But is that even correct? That's some, something we can revisit on Sunday because at running back, especially this week, it just feels like there's so many positions with questionables, and there's plenty of questionables on on receiver, but most of them I feel like are going to play. Yeah, we should probably lead into receiver now, Bobby. That we're gonna have yep. to just come back to this on Sunday, guys. Check check at eleven on Sunday about the the running backs. We'll have a lot better, a lot more clear picture at eleven on Sunday. So, right. Um, yeah. So I'm looking at right now at my exposures at wide receiver, and no, no surprise, it is going to be a lot of uh, Minnesota and the Chargers. But they were the mega chalk between Jefferson Allen and Williams. I expect those three to be the highest owned receivers this week. Tyreek Hill is technically questionable, who would probably be the next guy, but I assume that he's going to play. Um, but Jefferson, Allen, Williams, I, I like all three of it. I'm going to try to get a little different. So my way of getting different within that game is playing some K.J. Osborne, playing some Jordan Addison, um, potentially playing some Gerald Everett at tight end. But just just because they're you know my highest owned receivers are, are going to match everybody else's right now. Other guys I really like this week, uh, we, we talked about Christian Kirk bounce back. We got that last week as well. I, I think Christian Kirk I, I like a lot. I like Zay Flowers a lot. I think that we just want to bet on this kid until he's 7K. Uh, maybe it won't happen this year, but he's going to have some monster, monster weeks. Um, Calvin Ridley. Uh, I like DJ Moore in my stacks with, uh, you know, to get a little different than the Andrews if I, with with Lamar. Uh, I like Justin I, – I'm sorry, I like uh, – I like Marquise Brown a little bit just for the price and usage. Uh, Tank Dell, I think, and you know, they showed the love of them last week with uh, with getting all those targets. Maybe they can find something there. So I like the Tank Dell as a spend down. I like I like to go back to Reed, even though I know he's now the third receiver because you know you've got the other two guys back now or you've got the other guy back now. But I still do like getting to some Reed. Um, they ran some design plays for him, including the touchdown. So I, I definitely want to get to some of that. But other than that, it's it's like guys like Nico Collins, uh, Johan Dotson, 
uh, Terry McLaurin. And those are mostly just to run back my Buffalo stacks, but that's pretty much most of my receiver pool at the moment. I'm yep. going to, uh, to to dig a little deeper in before Sunday and decide whether I want to play guys like Josh Reynolds, whether I want to play Michael Pittman, whether I want to play uh, Chris Olave and CeeDee Lamb. I'm probably going to be okay fading most of those guys, to be honest. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good yeah. list, man. Mike Williams, agri ownership, about 30%. It's nuts. It looks like, owner, wow, 18. I think I, there must be some – there's not some ownership in here. It's kind of screwing up the projection. Um, so 18, 18% showing for the, uh, aggregate. That's pretty high. Justin Jefferson, 22%. So definitely going to want to find a couple guys to play different. Um, we talked about that Geno stack too. DK and, uh, DK is questionable, but I, he'd probably play, but Tyler Lockett, 6,400 and 6,900 for DK. That, that could be a little deadly stack against Carolina. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, maybe they blow him out. Christian Kirk, like you mentioned, Bob, he's only fifty four hundred still. These guys had some big games, and DK did not adjust their pricing here. Mm -hmm. Even if you look at Jaden Reed, he's still thirty eight hundred on here when I pulled him up. Right, right. And he's projected more than Romeo Dobbs now. He is getting past plays to him, and he's only thirty eight hundred bucks. So, but I mean Watson, if he plays good and looks good, he's fifty nine hundred, and I really liked his training camp this year. He looked mm -hmm. pretty good, so that could give Love a couple nice weapons. Um, mm -hmm. really, so. Yeah, I mean, there's some really good pricing on these receivers. Again, guys, these 6K guys we like. A lot of 5K guys we can like. You know, Mike Thomas, is he's looked good coming back and he's getting a lot of work. He could get a bunch of work. That number two receiver there, you know, the best the best corner will be on Olave, I think, right? You'd imagine, yeah. Zaire, Zaire doesn't really play man on the best guy, though. He floats a lot. Yeah, he'll probably just stay on his side, and they'll probably shift yeah, around. I, yeah, so whatever side he's on. So really, there's nothing – there, but I mean Drake London again against Detroit at five thousand. They just Detroit just lost their safety. A lot of these Lions fans at work that I work with and are just like, dude, we're we're hurting here. We lost a running back. We lost this really good safety we got. We're like crumbling here, and we're supposed to be a Super Bowl, you know, on a roll for a Super Bowl. I'm like, eh, it's, it's typical Lions here. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but you know, so. I think I think Atlanta versus Detroit. You can go with the back to that Bijan and Drake uh, Drake London plays again. I like, and then you know I miss Tank Dell up here too. But yeah, he he was a guy that I liked. I I have him high. Um, Gabe Davis again. I'm feeling a big game coming out of him soon. Fifty eight hundred. I like that. Jordan Addison fifty five hundred. Fifty nine hundred for Watson. Oh, Marquise Brown's popping a little bit, like you said. Um, well, just as a value play, just because he's forty nine hundred, right? He's, he's getting a lot of usage, right? He's getting a lot of targets. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the guys I like, you know, um, a lot of them. So, um, they'll, they'll just kind of go with my game stacks uh, this week, guys. Uh, um, Pittman's at sixty two hundred. His price no, never come up for his work, but I, I don't know if I'll get there. Um, are what what happened? Um. How many games is uh what, I, what the Richardson injury? I I never followed back up on it. I mean, you do you hear anything? The court, Anthony Richardson? Well, it, 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 I mean, it's concussion, so it's just a matter. Of, we're probably not oh gonna, yeah okay. You know, at least at the earliest, probably Friday afternoon, but more likely it might it might be till Sunday. Okay, so that's something we're gonna wait on. That could change my mind a little bit. I think they look good with Pittman a little bit. And Baltimore's not the same defense, so that could be a little. Or you could go with the Lamar stack, like um, um, Bobby said, and then run it back with Pittman. Don't mind that. Yeah, yeah, I thought I considered that one for sure. Um, talking about some tight ends here, uh, Andrews and Kelsey actually are projected to be the highest owned because we have that value at running back. Uh, I, I I do like both of them for what it's worth, but that's because I like my Lamar stacks. And, you know, I've never considered a double double Lamar stack before, and, and now I'm, I'm really thinking about doing it with Andrews and, and Flowers. Um, he's throwing the ball more, running a little bit less. And, uh, and it should, and, you know, against Indy, I think they should be able to play pretty fast and do what they want. Uh, so for tight ends, I have Andrews, I do have Andrews and Kelsey pretty high up, but there's plenty of pivots. I actually really like the tight end position this week. I think there's a lot of guys on the lower tier that are going to be overlooked a little bit. The popular ones will probably be Ertz and Conquo. Um, I, 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 and I, and I like both of them, but you've got Musgrave who's going to be owned less than them. I'm still a believer in Laporta, uh, Durham Smythe. Uh, Hunter Henry and uh, Kyle Pitts, even even though he's kind of been off to a slow start, 
if we're going to talk about Drake London as being a real play, we should at least talk about Kyle Pitts, who basically is a receiver anyway, and he's 3,900. The only problem is that why I have issues with London and Pitts in general is just Atlanta will throw the ball like a, a non-existent amount of the time. Nobody throws the ball less in football, including this year, than Atlanta does. So you really need concentrated targets, and uh, that's probably going to keep me a little bit off of them. But really deep position, I think, this week. And uh, I'm not getting to the Hawkinson thing, but he is going to be a low, low on part of that game, so I might have to force him in. And I didn't get to much Gerald Everett in my first stuff. But, uh, again, he's the other low on part of that game, so I might have to force that in. That is one way you can get different while staying within the game we want to stack. So uh, I have like 12 tight ends on my list, which is way more than usual. And uh, honestly, I could probably add some to that. So I like I, I like the tight end position this week. Yeah, I see a lot of good calls, I think. I, I You know, I agree with um, – I like the Laporta call at 4K. Hawkinson, um, 6,500. Uh, that's definitely – he's showing up about 6% here. So that – in that game we like, I think that's the spot where I like to – that might be my run back. You know, I could even stack the Chargers with the Hawkinson or something and then find some other piece in the other positions that get different as well. A um, guy you maybe didn't mention yeah. is Luke Musgrave again. Oh, I said his name, but, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. I just – I was kind of – I ran through so many. Minute. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no. You're, you're probably right because he's kind of on the top of the list here. 3,300. Um, you know, the game we, we talked about, I might be a little bit heavier than the field on the Green Bay game. I might be biased on that too. <laughs> um, you know, another guy that's kind of looked good at 2,900, Noah fans kind of work back into it. So if DK's out or banged up or something, maybe he gets a little bit more work. He's kind of 2,900. These cheap tight ends been helping me guys get a lot of players in my, on my lineup. I kind of like that. Even that Jake Ferguson for Dallas has been look good. Got a touchdown last week. I think Bobby had to call on that. Hayden Hurst has looked good at 3,800, getting a lot of volume. So maybe we're, it's right we take some of these guys that get more volume. You know, that is a reason I, I haven't played a lot of Atlanta. I was high on Drake London just because his price and his upside. But, like, you're right. They're going to throw it to Bijan. They're going to throw it to Kyle Pitts. He's not been getting a lot. He looked – I mean, they all look athletic and ready to go, but they're just not getting it out to these guys enough. So um, just really spreading it out there in Atlanta. So it might be tough. And then the Mark Andrews at 6K, I really like that price. Um. I think I think he's going to start working back in and being the guy over the middle that the Lamar wants to feed. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I agree with the. I think we're pretty much in lockstep on that one. Um, getting over to the defenses, uh, I am going to say that I really like want to spend down, and I think that obviously a lot of other people do too. I, we have I have a better refined idea of who people are playing than what we did earlier in the week. The Jets are a very, very interesting option at 2,800, but they're going to be popular. Uh, the Bills, should, to me, should be the most popular at Washington. I like the Bills. Um, the Cardinals are, are like the super cheap one that I'm considering against Dallas. Dallas hasn't had to do much, but you could Dak will make some mistakes. We know that. So I, I'll, I'll take a gamble on that. I'll take a gamble on the commander's defense, as you mentioned. Um, and then I'm just looking at my ownership real quick. Oh, uh, on the high side, uh, Chiefs. Again, on the lower side, uh, Indianapolis is cheap enough for me to consider them. Houston at 2,500. The Chargers at 20. I like actually the defenses in the Charger Minnesota game. Even in those stacks, I think you can play some of those defenses. What do you think about that? Like with a stack, play the defense? Yeah, it's, 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 it's worked out so well so many times, and people are so afraid to do it. But no, I've, I've done almost that like kind a of stuff. Player. Yeah, I've done that kind of stuff in the past. It's a, actually a viable strategy. You think if the if the Chargers defense gets a Cousins pick or a Cousins fumble, then Herbert's getting the ball back and he's chucking it right. You know, they're throwing, they're going down the field. So, you know, so I I think it's vile. I think it's a good call, Bobby. I think I like that. I like that. I might have to throw a few lineups in like that. I have in the past. Um, so I definitely don't mind it. Nice. Um, anybody specifically who you who you like on defense? Any any contrarian plays? Anything you want to mention on defense? Um, I think you got most of the heavy hitters. You guys know I spend down a lot. I usually look for these defenses. You know, I even get to could get to the Bears at twenty two hundred. Seems mm-hmm. a little odd, but um, just because I wish we, we're not getting any two K defenses this year. DK's not doing that anymore, eh? Yeah, they just thought, why even make that the minimum then if they're not going to make anybody 2K? Like, shouldn't it, shouldn't, like, shouldn't 
Chicago be 2K? <laughs> yeah, they should be. And then should be a defense that we could play at 2K, not 2200. This kind of throws a little wrinkle in things. Yep. Um, but yeah, the commanders at 2400 were a good call, I think. Um, also, the Colts, you mentioned them, right? So mm -hmm. 2400 against Lamar. I don't know if you guys seen him holding the ball like this. The uh, it falls out of his hand. He's just running like a crazy man, you know, with the ball, you know. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, turnover. The Colts could get a turnover anytime. So, mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So some of those defenses I really like a lot. So those little cheap ones, and the Jets against yeah the twenty hundred they're gonna be chalk at like sixteen percent here average thirteen percent. So that's pretty chalky. So yeah. yeah, even Washington's getting up to six, and the Arizona's getting not showing ten percent aggregate. So people are on these cheaper defenses uh a lot I think so. Um, just because you can get so much more in your roster, so in your overall lineup, so yeah. Yeah, and and um, and as we you know as we pivot over to just like our you know the the, the play of first of all I was I I won last I, I got it right last week I said that uh, I said Debo Samuel would be in the Millionaire Maker winner and he was uh, in both of them I believe it certainly was in the in the five fifty five I don't know for sure about the twenty but I think he was um, so I'm going to take another crack at the the Millionaire Maker winner uh, maybe go for a little bit of a lower own play this week. And I'm going to say, I'm going to go out there and say that Zay Flowers has the big week this week. So uh, I was debating between he and Christian Kirk at the same price. So I will probably have to force in a Christian Kirk and uh, and uh, Zay Flowers lineup in there because I think both those guys are primed for a big, big performance coming up. So that's my my hotter take. Rody, any hot takes with the uh, oh, games? Anything that you like, especially this week that you want to highlight before we get out of here? Yeah, that's a good one. You know, the hot take would really be the Chargers actually in the millionaire winning lineup one of these days. That would really be a hot take because they, they really struggle. And They're the most popular be, team, though. I, I know, but they – so that means they probably won't be. So, like – Well, I guess anything is – I guess anyone is to – yeah, that's fair. So, you know, like like the hot take would be them finally getting – like everyone's on them all the time and then they, they let us down or they blow the damn game, you know. So it's like what are they going to do this week, you know. So – um, yeah, I, I still like the Packers mini stack, I think, or the, okay. or the Packers again this week Yeah, um, against the Saints. That. Maybe that, maybe it's a big shootout and, uh, maybe some big touch, long bomb touchdowns getting that game. Mike Thomas, Alave runs some extra yards and gets some breakout one. And there's just kind of more of a shootout. The total goes over on that game. Maybe I just take the over on that game. 42 yeah. over. Yeah, I like. It. I can get behind it, but I actually like that Green Bay as a sneaky call. And partly what I like is that game has a lot of cheap pieces on Green Bay and and good weapons on New Orleans and potentially value at running back. So you might be able to get a stack in of that game that may not go crazy producing, but it'll give you all the money to spend everywhere else. Yeah, you know? or you can get Jefferson and Keenan Allen or whatever, all these other like that. Yeah. where possible in that lineup or something like that where you're getting some of the main games, but you're also getting the cheap stack that has upside. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I like awesome. that. All right, man. Well, we can go ahead and get out of here. I know, you, I know you're coming off of a, of a big company party, so I, I, I feel for you. I've been there myself. Um, so uh, I, hope things, I think hope things go better tonight and look forward to uh, another yeah. fun week of football. Anything you want to say before we get out of here? You know what to do, Rody. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, we're about on time anyways because uh, my Zoom only gets us so many minutes. So I'm only down to eight minutes anyway. So, uh, we're just going to have to end it here. So good luck this weekend, guys. Hope this DFS picks helped you guys out. Catch us uh, live at 11 on Sunday. We're going to break down all the injury news and see who's in and who's out. Also like the video and subscribe if you're not, if you're just checking it out. Also check out our site. we got some discounts going on, NFL 15, for 15% 15 off uh, the first month. And then uh, check out the new packages we got. And as always, guys, let's get it.